New darkness. Anyway. Yeah. So thank you very much indeed. And um, I just, um, uh, today I don't have a, a, a written uh, speech. Are you, you have a... Have I given you this? This one? It's okay? Stop telling us. They're coming. 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 They're Universal. It's fine, but only him is in the shot. Yes, yes. yes. just uh, yeah. him to move. Get it, side. get it even. But the phone there is just okay. Let's do it. The... That's why we are eating with the disaster. Come on, the result. Yeah, so. You can't move a bit. On security. <laughs> no, and <laughs> no, and uh, <laughs> so yeah, so um, so I was saying that uh, I mean this is the first time that uh, you know we uh, I'm coming here to address uh, the media and uh, the issues that I want to bring out they are very very important which is why I called you. Otherwise, I would have been speaking on my usual uh, you know, Facebook page. But what I, what I have today, I think it is something that uh, should be covered you know, by uh, the media uh, professional. Firstly, there is uh, a point that I want to uh, put, um, um, put out, which is um, uh, that uh, I think Basically, what I'm trying to look at today is the reconciliation and how we can move this country forward. And the only way we can move this country forward is by, you know, looking at each other as Zambians, looking at each other as brothers and sisters, other than fighting one another. And that, on that note, I want to set an example myself that uh, some of you know very well that in 2017, in this very room, uh, with um, uh, a number of you present, I brought out the issue of uh, given Lubinda and uh, the, um, the FRA issue of selling maids. That issue ended up in court. At some point, I did apologize to given Lubinda, but the case has continued. It's still in court, and uh, I want to unreservedly tender my apologies to given Lubinda, the acting president of uh, the Patriotic Front, that um, I apologize for the pain and the inconvenience that I caused on him and his family, the Patriotic Front, the, uh, his friends and um, relatives. I totally apologize and I offer this unreservedly and I hope Honorable Given Lubinda will find it in his heart to forgive me and uh, embrace me as his brother so that we can move together, we can work together. As you know, Patriotic Front is a big party and I want to work with the uh, Patriotic Front. I want to work with the Patriotic Front, not that I want to join Patriotic Front. I want to work with them because it's a big political party. They have got experience. They were, they, they were in government. So with a lot of things which I'm going to talk about shortly, for us to address those issues, I think we need a good team. We need to come together. We need to work together as opposition. I know some of my brothers in the so-called UPND Alliance are sitting like Baripaleba office waiting for jobs. I want to tell them that there are no jobs coming for them and the best that they should do is to disband that uh, labor office gathering and uh, join us to offer checks and balances. But as we do this, we need to do it uh, in union. And uh, 
I don't think it would be possible for me to go and sit with the PF and engage them when I'm fighting with given to the reacting president in um, uh, in court. It just can't work. It has to start with peace. We have to start with peace. We have to reconcile. And I'm extending. I'm I'm, I'm offering this. Um, Apology to given Rwinda, hoping that he will accept it and uh, accept that we work together uh, as Economic and Equity Party <coughs> and as PF as a former ruling party. Having said that, what are these issues that I'm talking about, which I want us to work together um, as opposition political parties? It brings me to the issue of uh, the seven months of uh, the UPND government. We were highly hopeful. We were highly expectant. I'm sure even those of us who didn't vote for UPND, the moment we saw them emerging victorious, the moment we heard the speeches of President Haka in the Hichilema accepting that, um, you know, He's happy, he has won the elections. The speeches that we heard him present when he was uh, inaugurated, then speeches we heard the first time he went to parliament, I must say they were wonderful speeches. And this I'm saying today, you can even go back to my page and you will see the comments that I gave. To some of you who even uh, you know, interviewed me, I did commend President Haka in the Hichilema because really he spoke, number one, as a person that wanted to unite this country. That wanted to unite this country. He spoke like a person that wanted to change the economic status of this country. He spoke like one who wanted inclusivity. These are the three points that he spoke about and I, I, and I want to, I'm talking about, I will address these points one by one. The issue of uniting the, uh, this country, number one. Of course, when you talk about uniting this country, many people usually think of, you know, appointing people from all, all the ten provinces of our country. Yes, that is one character, but it's not enough. You need to go beyond the mere appointing of people from different, uh, uh, different uh, provinces of, of this country, or rather 10 provinces of this country. You need to go beyond that. And how do you go beyond that? You need to go beyond that by embracing others as your brothers and sisters. This is number one, what can unite this country. You cannot unite a country when yourself, you are seemingly always calling others names. You can never. You can't, you can't unite a country. President Akainde Ichilema, like I said, he spoke very well that I'm going to be different. I'm going to do things differently. But alas, whilst he has been saying that, he has gone on a rampage of every day talking about others, uh, convicting others in the press, and whenever he has an opportunity, whenever he has an opportunity, President Haga in the HLMA is always convicting the people, uh, especially those that were there. Now, this will not bring unity in the country, and we need this unity. We need this unity. Of course, this is not to say that those who did wrong things or those who engaged in corruption should not be uh, followed. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if there are those who have stolen, can we go for those? Instead of being general, what I'm talking about here is the issue that President Haka in the HLM has been too general, too general and making allegations that he has failed to substantiate. I can pick one example. One example is when he, had a he held a press conference uh, at State House and he spoke about the presidential jet and he said, you know, what was there 
I mean, he used the word that, I mean, I can't choose, disgusting, if you remember. And he even mentioned that, I mean, people store a lot. But Zambians have been waiting, particularly myself, I've been waiting to see who is that person that was behind that presidential jet, who got more than he was supposed to. So, it is okay for him to fight corruption, but it is not right to generalize. Can we single out those who are corrupt and let us prosecute them? Other than speaking in general and making wild allegations. Wild allegations which, up to today, seven months in power have not been substantiated. If you make allegations, substantiate them. If you make allegations, substantiate them. Otherwise, don't. Especially when you are talking about uniting the country. So that is number one, number one issue. It's very, very important. You can't unite a country when every day you are busy pointing at others, you are busy generalizing that they are corrupt, that they are criminals. I don't think that is how a peacemaker uh, come out. The other issue that President Daka Indeichi must spoke about in view of uniting the country, he spoke about to say, as I'm coming in, no one is going to be arrested for making a political statement. No one is going to be arrested for, for making a political statement. Much as some of the statements that have been made by my other opposition political party leaders, much as I don't agree with them, but I have been perturbed that these people have actually been called and some of them are in court. So where is the difference that he was talking about to say, I'm going to be different from those others. When he, of course, myself, you know, I mean, when I used to speak, when I speak in certain, uh, certain times, I was arrested by the, by the PM. But even President Haka in the HLM has done the same thing. And some of these people have been charged, the same charges that we were being charged during the time of um, a, the PM. So where is the issue of uniting the country? I have a problem there. The other point is the issue where, where I'm talking about turning around the economy. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, President Haka Inde Ichilema, from my point of view, has been a disaster in trying to change the economy. And why do I say he has been a disaster? Because he has made things worse than he found them. President Haka Inde Ichilema has made the economy of this country worse than he found it. And there is no any economic indicators that you can, you can talk about that would say things are getting better. No. Number one, we can talk about the, you know, the prices. The prices of commodities. The prices of commodities have just gone skyrocketing. Within these seven months, I mean, the prices of commodities have increased more than 50%. Within seven months, not a year, within seven months, we have seen that the prices of commodities have increased by more than 50%. And surely, this is the against what he used to promise. This is against what he spoke about when he addressed us during his inauguration, during his time in parliament. This is against. And as we are talking about all that, when prices of goods are going up, I mean, look at the salaries. Look at the salaries. The salaries of people have not appreciated. I know the civil servants were given about 12%. Some of them, they still haven't even gotten it. The defense force, they're still complaining. They haven't gotten that. But look, it is not just about the, the public sector. It is also about the private sector. This government has neglected the private sector. This government has neglected the em, 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 employees in the private sector. They have neglected them. The labor office is not protecting people in the private sector. The labor office is not protecting you, Imoeba Neva journalist. They are not protecting you. Enough. Since you are new, that new dawn came in power. You used to cover him and he used to promise you good things. But I know 
you may not write these stories, but I know that you are having it difficult. Even yourselves, you are having it difficult. Get us. The private sector really needs to be considered. And this government, this government is not helping the people in the private sector. They are being abused and the salaries are still the same. And they have got nowhere to go and complain. You have got nowhere to go and complain. Now, this is not what people expected. This is not what people expected. Of course, somebody would say, no, the inflation rate has gone down. Inflation, how does inflation, you know, uh, operate? I want to, the problem, you know, they claim to be, to be educated and to be knowledgeable, but uh, look at the, uh, the, uh, the explanations that they are giving. It is not always good when the inflation goes down. Sometimes inflation goes down because people have no money. Inflation is simply because the demand is higher and the things start going up. The demand is higher and the things start going up. When the demand, there is no demand, the demand has gone down. Even the prices of goods, they don't go up. So there is deflation and the people can't People can't afford. Inflation has gone down because people can't afford. That is why people can't afford. Eh? I don't like to talk about, to, to, to call the names uh, of some of these people because they are among the few in, the, in this government. Anton, he was busy talking about, uh, no, inflation has gone down. No, inflation has gone down. It has gone down. People have no money. So, you can't expect inflation to go up because people have no money. People are suffering, and this is real. People are suffering. But of course, the new don cannot understand because for them, they are, they are, they are eating. They are okay. That is on the issue of prices going up. We are talking about fuel. Look how fuel has increased. And this so-called explanation of saying no, because there is war there and whatever, whatever. What is the government there for? President Kagame is coming in the country today. I hope President Hakaine Hishle Mahu ask him about that statement that Kagame made recently. Kagame said the government is supposed to help people in terms of difficulties. These are, time, these are times of difficulties. And our president is quiet, is allowing things to go worse than he found, he found uh, things. President Hakainde Ichlema has to, has to face the Zambian people and apologize to them that he has made things worse for them. I will repeat that President Hakainde Ichlema has to come out and face people and apologize for making their lives worse than he found them. Things are bad now. They are very, very bad. And he has to apologize. He led them to this. And he, he cannot run away from the responsibility. The fuel price we are talking about, we say, no, whatever, whatever. Even if there is war, even if fuel is increasing, this government must be able to come in with policies and measures that will cushion the lives of the Zambians. The issue of subsidies, this is what, this is when subsidies come in. Subsidies are supposed to come and cushion the lives of people. That's what subsidies are. Subsidies, and it's not a permanent instrument. It is something that you resort to, to cushion the lives of, of, Zamb of, of people. And whilst the, this minister of energy, Peter Kapala, is busy saying, no, we cannot talk about, uh, about uh, uh, subsidies. And yet people are suffering, and you're saying you cannot talk about subsidies. They don't care about the people. Subsidies are for the people. They are not for Haka in the They are not for ministers. They are for Zambians. And certainly Kapala, Peter Kapala doesn't need subsidies. But Zambians need subsidies. I want to repeat that. Peter Kapala, Haka Inge Ichirema, and all the cabinet ministers, they don't need subsidies. But Zambians need subsidies. 
And they have to remember, I want to remind them, that the Zambians, the Zambians are the ones who voted for them. So whilst them are saying, no, we don't want subsidies, they have to know that Zambians want subsidies. So they have to act. I know they are struggling with the issue of IMF. They're struggling with the issue of IMF because they boasted. When they came in, they boasted that you, uh, PF spent seven years, you know, trying to get uh, an, an IMF deal. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the IMF deal will not just work. Ndemewe chinga, IMF deal will not work. All those who are counting on IMF, forget it. And I'm sure President Hakainde Ichirema knows this. He knows this. We know what the IMF want. We know. We know even from the time of PF, when PF was in government, we know. We know why President Edgar Chagwarungu failed to get that. And at the end of the day, he became frustrated and he said, you know, we don't care about the IMF. You remember, he made a speech. We don't care about the IMF. We are a sovereign state. Why? It is because of the conditions that the IMF are putting on the Zambian people. And the, 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 the conditions of the IMF, they spell suffering. And President Akainde Ichilema is like that person who is following a smell of a meat somewhere hoping you find the meat. You don't know which house is cooking the meat. It will not come. It will not come because IMF was telling us from the PF time, they were telling us that your budget is spent on personal emoluments. You pay a lot of people. What you need to do is to cut on on, on your employers in government. This is what IMF used to tell us. Now our new donors, they are increasing. They, are, they want to employ because they, they promised that they will create jobs and they don't know where to create jobs. New Don government, they don't know how to create employment. They don't know. Employment in the public sector is not creating employment. Employment in the public sector is not creating employment. You are just overburdening your government. You are just overburdening your government. What you, to create employment, it has to be outside government. That is where you can you create employment. Because to do that, you create industries. To do that, you have to come up with the, um, effective farming uh, strategies. To do that, you need to come up with retailing. And unfortunately, this government, they don't know about these things as if President Haka Inde Ichilema is not coming from the private sector. You can't tell me that you're creating employment in the public sector. And this is what IMF has been talking about. That you know you have employed too many people in the government. Can you reduce on, on that? And unfortunately, they are increasing on that. It's true. Some of these, uh, I mean, some of these the, uh, employment, it's good for, the, for, 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 for Zambians. But what I'm insisting is that employment, the significant creation of employment must be done in the private sector. And this government is killing the, the private sector. How are they killing the private sector? They came in, since they came in, when they just came in, they labeled all those people who were doing business with the, the previous government, they labeled them corrupt, thieves, ineffective. And instead, they have embraced the foreigners. They have embraced the foreigners. Since this government came in, they have paid more foreigners than Zambians in their so-called debt dismantling process. They have prioritized the foreigners. They have been paying foreigners. They don't pay Zambians. A lot of Zambians who supplied little, little things like beans, kuliwaka popola. Kuliwaka popola, beans, namayo, ayakungula beans somewhere. Aleta kuru for headquarters. And up to now, he has not been paid because they are saying they are cadres. Now, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. You can't come and label everyone a cadre corrupt, and this is why, my brothers and sisters, 
if you have not realized, this is why we are having shortages of medicine. Because the people that were supplying medicine, but you don't buy sides, sir. They have come in and they have said, all these are corrupt. All these are corrupt. And now they have been looking for people that can supply medicine. But medicine is not something that you can supply like timber. No. Medicine cannot be supplied by anyone. It is supposed to be supplied by experts with certain regulations in place. And for somebody to qualify to supply medicine, you need to be certified. You need to be given a license. But immediately they came in. They said, no, we are not going to work with them. And they started going around the country. I have information. They wanted, they went to Switzerland to go and ask if they can buy medicine directly from there. And they were told, no, we have agents that supply your country. You can't buy directly. And in other countries, people respect their citizens. They want to work with their citizens. They don't like government to government kind of thing because they want to empower people. And yet here, we have a, a director at Zesco and uh, his colleagues, Napita Kapalawine, they are saying, no, we can't give Zambians, we can't give Zambians to supply poles. We can't give Zambians to supply poles because they are middlemen. Is Pita Kapala, I, I excuse him because he's, a, he's an engineer, so maybe some of these terms, he may not be familiar with them. What do you mean when you say, when you say middlemen? When myself, if I get an order from Zesco, and then I go and buy from a manufacturer, I supply to Zesco, do I become a middleman? Then who is a retailer? Then who is a retailer? And that's why clearly we have retailers and wholesalers. This is very clear in terms of business. There are those who are wholesalers, there are those who are manufacturers, and there are those who are retailers. And there is nothing like middlemen, there is nothing wrong for Zesco to give a Chirutatayari, for example, to go and buy timber from a manufacturer and to bring it to Zesco. Because when you do that, you are creating employment, you are creating a livelihood, first of all, for me as Chirutatayari and my family. You are also creating employment for the people that have employed. You are also creating employment and a livelihood for the transporters that I'm going to that I'm going to engage. If you hire a company which is outside the country, that country will start by looking and working with the people that are of that country, including transporters. So even the transporters are cut out. Even the in to some extent, even the, the, the clearing agents. Because we know, especially with the mines, they have got they have created to my companies which they call Zambian companies, and yet they are the owners. And they use these companies to clear their goods. They don't use Zambians. It is the same in the transport sector. In the transport sector, this fuel that we are talking about, we have companies here who are supposed to be OMCs, and they are supposed to be contracting Zambian businessmen or Zambian transporters. Instead, they have bought trucks. And these trucks are the ones who are transporting their their goods. My brothers and sisters, the things that I'm talking about here, these are facts. And I'm trying to, I'm belaboring to make you understand how this government has been a disaster on many fronts. On many fronts, look at the things that I've touched on. And yet President Haka in the HLM can say, can dare say that we are moving forward. They are messing up the economy. They are giving this economy to, to the foreigners. Because the debts, they are paying the foreigners. Business, they are paying the foreigners. Another person said, no, Zambians, they overprice. There is what we call price index now. There is what we call price index. So you simply say, if you have to supply a timber, it will not be more than 1,500. And that is what will go. That is what will go. So where is the issue of Zambians overpricing? Tell them how much you want them to supply. Tell them. At no, some Zambians have not supplied. Who are those? Let's, let's arrest them. Let's arrest them. Let's prosecute them. 
So, in my view, this government is, is a mess. It's really a mess. It is a disaster. I am declaring this UPND government a disaster government. A new darkness. A new darkness, not a new dawn. A new darkness. In many fronts, there is nothing. I wish a minister would come here, Renata Peter Kapala, Kabuswe, for example. Yeah, they say, no, we want to empower Zambians. We want to empower the youths. I'm a licensed to the mines. They have closed that. Why? Because whoever was issuing licenses was corrupt. Oh, Black Mountain, let's give it to the whole entire Copper Belt. It is a mess what is happening at the Copper Belt there. And Peter Kabuswe is sitting there, enjoying himself, and making all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, rhetorics that he, uh, the Black Mountain is better managed. The Black Mountain is a disaster now. It is a disaster. And Peter Kabuswe must, must, Recognize this fact and sort out the mess that is causing, causing, uh, causing at, the, at the Black Mountain. Mind you, I want to caution P uh, Peter, 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 uh, is it Paul Kamsoy? Paul Kamsoy, I want to caution him. He has to understand the history of the Copper Belt. Copper Belt, if you remember, in the past, there was high crime there. And the high crime was somehow reduced with the help of the Black Mountain. A number of youths, they go there and they have a light do. The mess that is causing in the Black Mountain, very soon, very soon, we will have a high rate of crime in the Copper Belt. And Peter Kabuso, because he is protected by the Zambia police, he will not be affected. But the people there will suffer. So I am calling upon Peter Kabuswe, Peter Kabuswe, Paul Kabuswe, that please, can you, can you go to the copper belt and sort out that mess? It is really a mess. My brothers and sisters, there are a number of issues. Probably some, the, 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 the Sala. There are a lot of issues that I can touch on. But I think I've demonstrated to you that this government is a disaster. It is a disaster. President Haka in the HLMA is a disaster. He is a disaster. And he should not flatter himself to think that, no, he's doing well. No. There is nothing that he can point at. CDF, he was celebrating the other day. No, we have released money for CDF for the first quarter. First quarter, this is second quarter. This is second quarter. So if you want to your CDF to work, you must give money at the beginning of the quarter, not at the end of the quarter. How does that help you? How does that help the people? You are talking about free education. Every day by UPND, by UPND free education, free education, free education. Free education, the teachers, a number of teachers have not been put on payroll. A number of teachers have not been put on payroll. That is to start with. We are talking about that. Money, among grants to the government schools have not gone. They have not gone. Headmasters and the headmistresses are now struggling to run the schools. So how are they going to run the school? Just by saying, no, 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 you can go to school, Mwebana, you can go to school. You have a frustrated teacher, you have a frustrated headmistress, what education is going to be there? It is a disaster, it is a disaster. So on the economic front, I can tell you, UPND is really a disaster. They have made things worse than where they found them. And they can argue, they can say whatever they want, but these are the facts that have, that have laid down on the table. So the last issue that I, I wanted to say, I wanted to discuss now is to say, with all these things that are happening, with all these things that are happening, it is time for the opposition to wake up. It is time for the opposition to wake up. And I am appealing to all my brothers and sisters to wake up. And I'm appealing especially to those in the so-called UPND alliance. Those who are in the UPND alliance, tapadio fo mwika niloko. Atichi kalika pansa ka, musu mba wawari, tapale cho mwika niloko. Just dismantle yourself, be like KPF, and start operating on your own. To those young people who are looking for a political party to join and everything, for us now, nalewa, nalawa pa sabatiko, but I don't think this is time to be on a sabatiko. This is time to wake, and I'm calling 
own Zambians to come and join economic and equity party. Most of you say there is a joker, what, 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 what. I joke around because in Shua don't fear. Can you so since in Shua don't fear, well I'm going to get jokes at least. You know, at that in your oipa, eh? If Ziba Wimba name why? Eh, that we have at least entertain people. But I am asking for those who have money to come and help economic and equity party. We mean well, and this time around, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know, I'll give myself 10 years and everything. Baka in the HLM is a one one term president. I've changed my mind. I'll be going for 20, 2026. 2026. That is what I'm for. I'm looking for. Baka in the ah, we are there now. We are paid. Now we are paid. And I know there are people that he might be telling him, "Chan chan, you know what I can do. No, the president you are doing good. Chan chan, whatever. Ah ah. We are there. We are paid. Listen it from me. Listen it from me. Bam dala na ufiru fia nya. Na fipe na. Na fipe. Kano fia ule ri amu muri imwe. Eba rani. Eba rani vepo. But who if you want to say we Zambia? A Zambian. Who if you out there? Finishala mitashi sha. Vaka indi. Echola mitashi sha. A Zambian. What is there for a Zambian to praise you for? What? What is there for a Zambian to praise you for? Nothing. Kwa nama soja, nama soja ba mbo kula irishani. Tafia chitikapo, ama soja wale irishani. Wale isa kuli tayari, ine. Eko wale isa, e joker. Tu complain. Mwema tipiri wino. Tapiri wino, ndia mewe chinka. Na lada ve chinka, mufu machumi. Wa mdala wandi, pull up your socks. Things are not okay. You are looking, you have you are, you are got four years ahead of you. But you need to change. But number one, come to the people. Apologize to them. Apologize to them and give them hope. Give them your direction. So far, there is no direction. You need to blah. Laza eka eka. Na randa na push. I don't think Palinet have a picture. Palinet have a picture. Yeah, the brother. The brother. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.